Now, Luke Burbank, on the rocks, red rocks. We'll let him explain. Star pose, we rise, proud in your feet, proud in your chest, feel the sunshine. It's 7 a.m. on the outskirts of Denver, and one of America's most iconic music venues is already a buzz. Circle your arms up, star pose, look up. Exhale, hands to hard, horse squat, sit low. One more and then we pause, breathe in. This is Red Rocks, an amphitheater formed by nature and shaped by humans that might provide the most incredible vista ever for your vinyasa. Each weekend morning in June and July, thousands of yoga enthusiasts flock to Red Rocks, which is just starting its day. Meanwhile, in a mere 12 hours, this place will be packed with a whole new group of people ready to vibe out under the stars. We'll get there in a minute. First though, how did this place get here? Every night feels special when you're working here, but there have been millions of those nights. Brian Kitts is the spokesperson for Red Rocks, and he's not exaggerating. There have been millions of nights like these. Scientists say somewhere between 70 and 40 million years ago, a geological event called the Laramide Orogeny pushed two giant red rocks into the position they're still in today. Making it safe to say, this is probably the oldest music venue in America. How about the acoustics? I mean, this is very beautiful, but do the rocks actually serve a purpose acoustically? Yeah, the acoustics here are really good. This is sandstone. It is uh, pink feldspar and iron oxide that make it red, but it absorbs sound as opposed to bouncing it around like you get inside of a modern venue. The Ute people inhabited the region surrounding Red Rocks for centuries until they were driven out in the 1800s. In 1905, John Brisbane Walker purchased the area to build an amusement park called Garden of the Titans. But when his fortunes ran out, the city of Denver acquired the property in 1927, officially naming it Red Rocks. Employment for hundreds of thousands of young men and war veterans was imperative. In 1936, as part of FDR's New Deal Depression-era Civilian Conservation Corps, young out-of-work men began hand-carving the amphitheater that we know today. So this, what we're walking on right now, was basically carved and chipped away by hand by a bunch of people back in the 1930s. Yep, you know, the bowl is here naturally. There would have been big boulders right out in the middle. They would have been dynamited out, but then they started carving every single row into the side of the hill. Pickaxes and just human energy. That human energy has been palpable here at Red Rocks over the years, with performances by everyone from the Beatles to on the night we were there, the String Cheese Incident. The intensity at Red Rocks is, is different. It's different. It's, you look up there and, and everyone's looking down at you, right? Framed the by the giant rock monoliths. The energy gets funneled down from the crowd to the stage and you walk out onto the stage and you look and it's everybody, just a, a wall of people above you. Bill Nershey and Keith Mosley are founding members of the String Cheese Incident. And don't bother to ask where the name came from. I did. They're not telling. The jam band started out in the 1990s playing Colorado ski towns, sometimes in exchange for free lift tickets. But they always dreamed of someday playing here. We were touring, playing Colorado shows, and we drove in, and we actually came up on stage, the band, and stood there together and, like, Let's visualize making this happen, you know. Stand where you think you would be standing yeah, yeah, during right. the show. Look up at the, at the seats and just say, we're going to do it. Apparently, it worked. As the String Cheese Incident has now played Red Rocks 45 times, making them one of its most frequent performers. I was cleaning the ass from Speaking of frequent Red Rocks attendees, there were lots of them in the audience this night. 
How many times have you been to Red Rocks? Uh, probably a little more than 30, I'd say. And this is about 45, 50, sixth time this year. Oh, definitely hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, Red Rocks has achieved something pretty rare. The venue itself is a draw for lots of people. Red Rocks is one of the reasons that we moved to Colorado. We, we people like Kelsey Powell now, and Bo Weller, Lafayette, who moved here from New Jersey. Perfect. So you really had a moment where you're like in Jersey, you're like lining up the pros and cons of places to move, and like on the pros list for Colorado as well, Red Rocks is there. Yeah. Like that was a real thing you discussed. Oh, absolutely. And has it like <laughs> lived up to what you were hoping it would be? Without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> as the night wore on and the stars came out, the band and the audience started to slip into a sort of cosmic groove, feeding off each other's energy. This year marks the 80th anniversary of this unique venue, which feels like a long time for rock and roll, but geologically, it's just a blink of an eye for these red rocks.